Greetings! Time for the second uh, skeletal lecture. Uh, I don't normally spend a lot of time in lecture talking about the bones. We spend that time in lab, so hopefully if you're unable to come to lab, you're working through the material and practicing your bones. But I'm going to just walk through the basics, and this time I got the sheet to make sure I mention everything I'm supposed to mention. And this is the list of bones you need to know. It's been put on Wiley Plus. I know, since I'm breaking it down into two lectures, it's not that difficult. It's not as, they're quick. All right, so this is the appendicular skeleton lecture, and you've had that wacky guy also explain it. Um, hopefully he didn't fall asleep. I think he's kind of dry. So we're talking about the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton are the appendages, the arms and the legs. We'll get the legs in a bit. And the girdle, the bones that hold these appendages onto um, the body. So we are going to start with the top. And what we have here is a clavicle and a scapula. And the clavicle and the scapula together make up the joint, the ball and socket joint, the most um, widely, you know, freely uh, moving joint of the body um, where the humerus comes into play. So, I mean, it is kooky, it is crazy. I'm going to be walking around a little bunch. So I have my clavicle, I have my scapula, and I mean, do you see a whole lot of stability in this joint where they, I'll figure this out more because it's on the other side. <laughs> They come together. I mean, there's 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 nothing. There's not much there. Where trying? Oh, it is on this side. Okay. Looks like that. Yeah. You know, these two come together and kind of make this process. And there's, there's nothing holding this bone in. So scapula, the bony shoulder blade on. Clavicle, the collarbone, you guys probably have broken in your life. And this is the humerus. So the humerus is the upper arm bone. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Let me push this buddy to the side. We can get everything here. <laughs> that doesn't look very comfortable, my friend. Your arm is very much backwards. Okay. So then when we take the arm, you always want to find the thumb and orient yourself that way. And I will tell you why in a minute. So we have the humerus, the radius. The radius is in line with the thumb. So you always want to orient yourself when you're looking at a picture of a skeleton, find the thumb. That thumb, then it's the bone that is in line with the thumb is the radius. The ulna is the other lower arm bone, your forearm bone, and the ulna, is what makes up the elbow and that part of the ulna is called the ulcranon process okay so the ulcranon process is the elbow part of your ulna your radius is your other arm bone in line with the thumb so what I want to show you guys though is this is the humerus this is the ulna See that? And this right here is the ulcranon process. It is quite the hinge joint. Notches right in. That's a pretty stable joint um, because this ulcranon process just kind of loops around to contain the humerus. Humerus, ulna, ulcranon process. Okay. As we're going down, we have carpals. Carpals are your wrist bones, metacarpals, and phalanges. Metacarpals are your hand bones. So when you're looking at an actual living person, metacarpals is this fleshy covered hand part, and then phalanges are your fingers. So each hand has how many phalanges? Five? No. Each phalange is its own bone. So 
If you can do this, that means those are separate, boin separate bones and they come together as a, a joint. Those are interphalange joints. So when we count phalanges, I have three on this finger. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and your thumb, 13, 14. Each hand has 14 phalanges. So 14 on this hand, as long, I'm assuming you don't have polydactyly and you just have five fingers. 14, 14, 28 for the hands and 28 for the feet. So that is a total of 56 phalanges, but 14 per hand. All right, so carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. And because you can do this, those are all separate phalange bones, 14 per hand. Okie dokie. Now we're going to go to the leg, and we're actually going to start to cut the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So I forgot I had this little guy kind of prepared. So carpals, which are short bones, metacarpals, which are hand bones, the fleshy part of the hand, and then phalanges. Phalanges, phalanges, and the two phalanges. Okay, the next part of the skeleton that we are talking about, we're going to start down below. I can't do that, can you? I mean, I'm kind of flexible, but I don't think I can't. I certainly can't do that. <laughs> All right, no comment. We're moving on before I get embarrassed. Um, I have phalanges as my toes, right? So let's start with um, ankle bones, tarsals. Tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. Okay, so look, these tarsals, you have, can you see that? Right, the heel bone. Well, but I wish I could swing this around a little more. I guess I can on this guy. So I have the heel bone. That's called the calcaneus. And the other bone that it meets with, uh, I guess I'll have to put him down and go to this, right? So this heel bone is the calcaneus, and this bone here is the talus. And these are clunky bones right these are the two bones that is holding up your whole body so yeah they're clunky they are weight bearing and they are part of your tarsals so this part that my hands on right now is tarsals so i will have and i'd like to point out the calcaneus because we will have the calcaneal tendon the achilles tendon attach insert onto the calcaneus so the calcaneus and the talus major weight bearing bones majorly clunky tarsals metatarsals are your fleshy foot bones and actually i think some of your phalanges are really contained in the flesh as well um, but again each foot will have 14 phalanges just like the hand okay tarsals metatarsals phalanges so let's talk about the leg <laughs> but it's I don't like me handling him like this. I have in the leg, I have the femur, the patella, and, ooh, did I just break something? Tibia and fibula, okay? Tibia is a lower leg bone that you cut when you shave your legs. And the fibula is on the side, so it's more lateral, okay? Tibia makes up the inner medial ankle bone. Fibula makes up the lateral ankle, and they all articulate with that talus bone in the foot. Okay, I'm gonna let them spin a little bit unhappily. I don't see any fragments, so let's go to the artificial bone for a second. So this is the tibia. This is the fibula. Which one would you say is weight bearing? I'm hoping you're thinking this one. So in my lower leg, I have a super clunky weight bearing tibia. That's what you nick when you shave the front of your leg. And then I have a fibula that just gives me stability and balance. And these two come together with the femur. Is that a nice joint, stable? No, not at all. When we talk about joints and we do the knee joint, the knee actually has 
extra cartilage, um, the meniscus, the meniscus, yeah, um, to help form a socket. All right, so here's the femur, <laughs> the largest bone in the body. So we have the head of the femur, and you know that's what people if they have a hip replacement. They're going to cut this head off, and they're going to replace it with um, uh, what's the name of the metal? Um, um, an artificial one, titanium, right? Titanium metal that I guess now is robotically inserted. Before they bang it in with a hammer, um, precision there. So when we talk about, we'll kind of come back to this. All right. So now let's go back to our buddy here. If I'm making you dizzy, I'm sorry. Because I want to talk about the pelvis. So the pelvis, let me get behind this guy, is the girdle, the pelvic girdle holds the leg onto the body. And there's three regions that you need to know. There's the ilium, this bony edges here is called the iliac crest so that's the ilium there is hold on that is much better lighting but that is too low hmm. you can tell i prepared well we'll use this other one okay I've got backups and the backups. So here is, so we know we're oriented, the pelvis. All right. So when we look at the pelvis here, now I'm going to tilt it back up. This is a real one. I don't know where it came from. Don't even ask me that question. I have the ilium. I have this part here I was trying to show you on the other guy. That's the ischium. When somebody sits down on you and they put their legs up and you're like, oh, you have a bony butt. That bony butt is the ischium. So now you're going to say, hey, your bony ischium is killing me. Okay, so ilium, ischium. And then in the front, this region. So it's all fused together as one piece, but it's like three separate bones. The front one is the pubis. Okay, and this little bit, which is broken now, but it used to join together. That is cartilage. That's called the pubic symphysis. That is also fibrocartilage, like the intervertebral disc. So I have the pubic symphysis joining these two parts of the pelvis together. The pubis is the bone in the front. Ilium is the upper region of the bone. And this part on the bottom here is the ischium. All right, so what you're also seeing here is the sacrum, and oh, here, I'll flip it around. It looks like part of the coccyx broke off. Sacrum, and then there was a coccyx here, but that's pretty fragile. All right, so that's in the back. So those are the three regions of the pelvis, but we don't stop there. You need to know some differences between the male and female pelvis. The male pelvis is usually thicker bones, more narrow, the female pelvis is wider um, because our pelvis is all about popping babies, having babies, so we our pelvis is built for that. So we will have a wider pelvis. It will be um, uh, narrower on the male. It will be thicker bones, more dense on the male than the female. And the... The arch here, I'm trying to see how I can hold this. Okay, so this arch between these two bones is called the pubic arch, right? Because I have the pubic symphysis, I have the pubis bone. So this arch right here is called the pubis. And it's very narrow on a male and it's wider on a female. So that is another difference between the male and the female, the pubic arch. So this one is very narrow. This is a male. And some other differences, um, the next one I'm going to talk about are these holes here, okay? See this hole? So this hole is where the head of the femur will lock into it. It's a nice deep joint. This hole here is called the acetabulum. 
and on the males, the acetabulum are more forward facing. So when guys walk, they walk very narrow and they walk in a straight line. On the females, our acetabulum are more on the sides. So instead of it being up here, it's gonna be back here a little bit more. So when we walk, we gotta swing our legs around, which translates into us wiggling when we walk, because we gotta swing our legs around. So I mean, some women work it a little bit more than other women, but there is a physiological basis to the fact that women will wiggle more when they walk because their sockets, their acetabula, are more on the side, and the males are more forward facing. Okay, another aspect, I think you can even see it here, is this pelvic outlet. I'm just calling it, I'm calling the hole in the middle is the pelvic outlet, okay? On the, so this, this space here, right, that a baby would pop through on a female, it's more oval shaped, big oval circle. On the guys, I have to put that down, it's more heart shaped, it's more narrow. So we can say that guys have their heart between their legs um, because you will remember it if I say it that way. So more heart shaped um, pelvic outlet on males. Now the other aspect, uh, some other differences, cause there's a lot, I just talk about the ones that are easier, is the sacrum. On a female, the sacrum is wider, and we're built for width. We're built to carry babies. On the males, the sacrum is narrower. On a male, the sacrum and the coccyx curve in more. On a female, the sacrum and the coccyx flare out a bit because we don't want to scratch the baby's head when it's born through that outlet. But you can translate that into saying that guys have their tails between their legs um, because it's more curved inward. I'm not bashing guys, this is just how it is guys. <laughs> Males have a curved in sacrum and coccyx, a narrow sacrum. Females a wider sacrum, a more flared out sacrum and coccyx, not so curved inward. Acetabula on the males, more forward facing. Hence, you don't run and knock your knees into each other. And females, it's on the side. We had the, trying to figure out how to this. the pubic arch on the males is more narrow, and the females is much wider. And then a, a wider pelvis on females overall versus a narrower one on males. Okay. I think I have talked about all the parts of the appendicular skeleton that I wanted you to know. <laughs> this is a short little video. Um, you will be labeling diagrams with your bones. You will need to tell me differences between males and females and that sorts of thing. Um, I guess that's all I have. I'm looking at the sheet. That's why if you're like, why is she looking over there? I don't have anything else. That's your bones, my friend. So I will see ya. Bye.